Hello everyone! Today I am working on quilting my Valentine quilt. This is a free pattern that's available on my website and there's also a free video tutorial for this entire quilt. So today I'm actually doing the quilting and I've chosen to do an all over design on this quilt because there's a lot of busyness happening with all these different fabrics and doing a lot of work to custom quilt this or to work within the blocks. I don't know if it would really pay off uh, visually and also since this is a seasonal quilt, I don't really wanna put 20 hours into quilting something that's only gonna be out for a couple weeks. So I've chosen this all over pattern and I'm doing it all freehand because I don't have a computer on my machine. So everything you see me do on my channel is all freehand on my long arm. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. And um, I hope you like this pattern. I think it's coming together really nicely and it's perfect for a Valentine's quilt. So I just finished this swirl here. So there's a heart here and a heart kind of right off where you can't see quite yet. So I think I'm gonna do another swirl right here and then maybe I'll squeeze in a little heart right here. So to come out of this swirl, I'm going to just make kind of an arc back and kind of sweep into a circle and spiral in and then spiral out and then bounce around it a few times. Now, as you're swirling in, the distance that you wanna leave between your swirls is double the quilting distance you wanna have in your quilt. So I've left about an inch here between these lines as I swirled in, because I generally want about a half an inch between my lines of quilting. So now as I spiral out, I'll be splitting that difference and achieving the kind of overall density that I'm really going for. So now that I finished spiraling out, I am going to do a little bit of a filler down here. I might bounce around this heart part of the way and then bounce back around this circle or this swirl. And what doing this little tail does is it just kind of adds some interest to your swirls and it also makes it easier to fill in all the little weird spots that might happen between swirls and hearts. It just gives you another little tool so it's just a little hook out and a hook back. And that little shape just, it mirrors kind of the point of the heart and the center of the swirl, and it really helps blend the entire texture together. So now I'm gonna bounce around the swirl and go right into a heart. Now I bring that point of the heart to about my quilting distance away from the previous stitch line, like the other side of the heart. Because I don't want my lines to touch necessarily because then it would be, um, it would be really noticeable once you're finished quilting. So now that I've done my heart, I'm gonna bounce around it. And my eye is kind of looking at this kind of unquilted area, knowing that I need to work back in there and do something here before it gets closed off. So you can see I just chose to do kind of a smaller swirl right here just to fill up that space. And filling up the space with similarly shaped quilting is the key in getting these all over designs to really look cohesive. It's less important the exact shape that you're quilting, that it's like in the other swirls or has the same amount of echoes. It's more about getting those similar shapes to fill the area. And that's what will make your kind of accidents look, um, well, they'll make it look less noticeable. So now that I finished this heart, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come around, kind of do a half echo of it one more time, and then add another swirl.
And that's all there is to this design. Now, if you need to kind of keep a uh, proportion of swirls to hearts so you don't forget to do the hearts, um, I think I'm doing about three or four swirls per heart. So if you need to kind of keep track as you're quilting, like I've done three swirls, I need to fit a heart in here somewhere, that's a great trick um, to use. Because sometimes when you're trying to do something randomly, it doesn't always work out really randomly. So having a little kind of proportion or rhythm to get into can really help. Now I am currently quilting at 1300, 1350 stitches per minute. So I like to work fast but you need to quilt at the speed that is uh, comfortable for you. This is not a race, and this footage might even be sped up, so it might even look like I'm going faster than I am. But take your time, and your goal should be for all your stitches to be about the same size, and it's just a size that looks good to your eye. Um, I would say these are probably coming in around maybe 10 stitches per inch, and they will get smaller, um, as you kind of pause and turn around at points, but just take your time and it's more about making your stitches look good and then going fast or rushing yourself. So I'm going to continue quilting this for a little while to show you how these patterns kind of fit together, but that's really all there is to this design. And um, once again, you can get this pattern for free. It's super easy. I made the whole top in about three and a half hours from grabbing fabrics off my shelf to a finished top. Definitely give it a try. It's um, free download and the link will be in the description below.